This is the Wise Guy Radio Show, a podcast dedicated to the education and advancement of today's artists in the world of glass. My goal is to share an understanding of simple business principles and relationship development that you, the artist, can implement now. Starting with good habits and a solid foundation, you can grow not only as an artist, but also an artistic entrepreneur. Welcome to the Wise Guy Radio Show. Hey, what's happening? Welcome to the Wise Guy Radio Show, episode number 135. This is Jay Michael, your host. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today's going to be a short and sweet episode, uh, answering some questions here that I received this week. I'm actually going to be answering one in particular. Uh, it came from a glass artist, uh, Gary Cottontail, and uh, I will have his link on the social feeds to give him some love on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, his question was asking about free shipping on first orders when it comes to establishing new relationships with new shops. And uh, I'll get in that here in a second. Before we do, I want to make sure we give some love to our sponsors for the show, Mountain Glass. You can go to mountainglass.com, check out all their sales going on right now for November. They're offering their uh, Asian Chinese Boro sale rod and tube. You can get 35% off just by putting in the code CHINESE at checkout. And then their soft glass 104 COE sale is Creations is Messy. Just throw in the code MESSY at checkout and you'll receive 35% off your order there as well. And stay in touch with Glass Roots. They have a lot of fun things going on. Preparing for next year's show as well as some upcoming stuff going on their events. So just go to glassrootsartshow.com and give them some love. Also, don't forget the Flow Magazine. We have the women's edition coming out here pretty soon. And uh, definitely go on there. If you have not subscribed to the magazine yet, you can get the online version or the paper one. Uh, but either way, definitely get in there. Uh, they have a crap ton of information, awesome publication, classes, seminars, all kind of cool stuff. Just go to theflowmagazine.com. And last but not least, we cannot forget to give love to American Helix. The guys over there, American Helix, Box Fan Willie and their friends, uh, especially being today is Veterans Day, and uh, they're a huge supporter of the veterans as most, if not all, of their glass artists that are working in their warehouse there are retired veterans. So go get some love to AmericanHelix.com. Say hello for me and say hey to BoxFan and all the family over there. And other than that, I uh, hope you all are enjoying this week. It's been a crazy week. Politics are over. Uh, well, I shouldn't say over, but the uh, election's over, which I'm happy about. And uh, I don't really care who you voted for or didn't vote for or what your opinions are. All I can say is through all this negativity and all this horse shit that's going on right now, all I can say is just really just all try and focus on uh, creation of work and just loving each other and taking care of our friends and family and uh, try not to pass judgment until things actually are put into place. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then at that point in time, you know, I know we like to preemptively try and uh, protest and make sure things uh, go certain ways, but in all reality, some of the shit's out of our control, unfortunately. But what we can control is our emotions and the love for each other and our friends and family. So take care of each other. Give everybody a hug. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can move on forward. So now it's time for us to get into our segment where we are going to be answering a question uh, coming from one of our audience members, uh, Gary Cottontail, asking about first orders with customers uh, pertaining to uh, retail stores and whether or not you should offer free shipping. And uh, so let's get on with the show. All right. So Gary wrote in asking whether or not he should offer free shipping for a first order for a new store. And this kind of all uh, pertains on the coattails of our series we did on the five-part series about selling and pricing work. And the last one, uh, the part five, I got into talking about the actual going into the stores and introducing yourself and getting uh, orders more or less, just established, establishing relationships with new shops. And once you get to that point, obviously the goal is to get an order. And when you get an order, then you have to figure out, okay, what do I do from here? So myself personally, what I tend to do when I get first orders, um, for one, I try to make sure that the shop understands that I do have a minimum. Uh, when I was first going on, probably the first five, 10 years or so of my career, besides dealing with the distributor, um, I, when I would sell to my retailers, I'd make sure they understood that I had a minimum of $300 order. Now there were times where some of my local shops who I've been dealing with for 18 years, uh, just about, I definitely had no problems filling in, you know, if they needed like a $50 order or what have you, uh, I had no problem doing that. But when it came to orders that were out of state or even more than an hour's drive out of town, uh, I made sure they understand that my minimum order uh, for locals was three three fifty, 
And then if it was an hour or more out of my area, it was a minimum of $500. And just by doing that, it allows the shop to understand that you're serious as a business person, but also that you're serious as an artist and that you're not just going to drive all the way to hell wherever you need to go to uh, just to have them tell you that, that they don't only want to spend 100 bucks. Um, and remember too, kind of a side note that when it comes to our industry, <clears throat> as much as I love and I respect and appreciate the smoke shops out there, um, we have to remember that without us, they would not exist. Now we could exist without them per se, because of social media and different things nowadays, we don't want to have that attitude, but we definitely want to understand that we are the commodity. We are the ones that, uh, are needed. You know, we need them again in a sense, but in all reality, uh, we're the ones that have the power and control. Don't take that to your head and be a dick about it. But just remember that when you understand that your work, if it's quality work, <clears throat> you should be able to get the money that's at the value is what it is. Now, obviously, value is in the eye of the beholder. You know, with the way this market's going and the industry prices are all the place. But there are some pretty set standard prices. But just remember, be confident. Don't be a dick. But let your shops know that you have a minimum amount for what your orders are going to be. Even if it's 300 bucks, you know, start off somewhere small. Now, from that point in time, when a shop orders a new order, what I typically do for first orders is I let them know for one, again, I have a minimum, but also that I offer 10% off. And the 10% off just comes off the top of the order. That way, when I do ship an order to a store, the shipping is expensive. And it's pennies on the dollar when it comes down to it, but there's still the expense there's the time it takes to pack your order. There's all the packing materials, bubble wrap, peanuts, boxes, and then you have your shipping fee. And some shipping times can cost around fifty to a hundred dollars. <coughs> Excuse me, a little early morning coughing here. Uh, depending on where you're sending your stuff off to, so my advice would be to not order or not offer free shipping, but to offer a discounted percentage on first orders only. And then if it's a shop that's consistently ordering from you, uh, say they order a thousand bucks a month or they order a thousand dollars worth of glass at a time, well then you can offer them a 10% discount or 15% discount. And on a thousand dollar order, that's going to be like a hundred dollars off, which in their mind should be, okay, cool. They're getting a free pipe or two or three, depending on what you're sending them off. So when you, and, and I guess by, by saying this percentage thing, it, what it does in the, in the business side of this is it allows you to take your profits and really fine tune the numbers so that you know exactly what it costs to ship, including all your packing material because there's shipping and handling. And don't forget the handling. Handling is the time it takes to pack the order. So you get your order in, you have a $350 order, $350 order, so if you're shipping an order and it's going to cost you, or okay, let me back up. So your order that you got is for 350. So you take your 350, you say, okay, I'm going to give you 10% off this, which is going to save the shop $35. $35 is a pretty good deal because that could be a free bubbler, a free pipe, a free spoon, whatever it's going to be. Take that that $35, subtract it from your 350, which is going to leave you with 315. And then if you ship your shipping costs, including your handling, which is including your materials, your pack and supplies cost say 50 bucks to ship you're going to be left with 260. now the 260 you obviously need to take that number and take other numbers out of that for cost of working your material cost whatever and then you have your percentages of profit um, but just to think about it it's the best way to go about doing this make sure you always pull out a number out of this number that out of your sale your 350 or whatever it's going to be to pay back your shipping and handling. If you do all this shit right and on a constant basis, you're always going to have money for shipping. You're always going to have your money for materials and supplies. And then you're also going to have a good profit on top of it all. And also be able to pay your bills and your feed your families and everything else, which when it comes down to it, it's the most important part. This is all about creating good habits and understanding. So to summarize all this little thing here, I would not, rec I would not recommend offering free shipping. I would just recommend offering a percentage off first orders only. And then if a shop is consistently ordering from you and they order a certain amount all the time, then you can order to offer them a higher discounted rate. Again, if it's a thousand dollar order, say, cool, here's another 10% off. That's going to save them a hundred bucks. Um, in a lot of places and situations, when you go to stores like over with my company that I work for over at Disney, we offer 10% off and Disney offers 10% off as a special to uh, they're some of their annual pass holders and their vacation club members. They get 10%. Now, if it's a small ticket item, 10% really just saves you taxes. Cool. 
But if it's on a bigger order, again, a thousand dollars or even five hundred dollar order, it's going to save them fifty bucks, which in the long run turns into a free pipe. So, I wouldn't go with oh, you order three fifty, you get a free pipe, blah blah blah. Just keep it simple because if you keep it simple, it's going to keep your numbers even more easy to keep track of. So just offer them a percentage. If it's ten percent, twenty percent, whatever you want to give them, that's up to you. I would recommend I wouldn't go any more than say fifteen percent tops because you're taking away from your profits. And a lot of times too, just because the shop orders for the first time doesn't necessarily mean they're going to order again. But the idea is to have great customer service, great product lines, build this relationship, and then have this relationship last for years and years to come. I have customers I've been dealing with since the very beginning of this process of my, my glass career, almost 18 years now. Now I haven't sold them glass in a while, but that's just my situation here with my business and being busy with Disney and et cetera. And uh, damn, that word, et cetera. Jesus. And uh, that being said, uh, the question for this week, which I'm going to get into in a second. So hold on before I go there. <laughs> and I'm not editing this out. This is a complete one take. <clears throat> I got to get this out and recorded and posted before I head off to work here today. Um, but yeah, so I hope that, I hope that answers the question uh, for Gary and for you or for anybody else that, that you know of. If they come to you and ask you about the same thing, say, hey, you know he recommended or if it, you have another recommendation yourself go for it and i would like to understand too what it, what do you do how do you go about doing this you know do you have a process when you do relationships with build relationships with new customers do you offer a percentage do you give free shipping do you give a free pipe you know these are the kind of things i'm curious because we all have ways of going about it i'm not trying to set like an industry standard i'm just trying to give you some ideas and ways to go about doing this just from my experience personally because i have tried fucking every way of going about enticing a customer to come in and buy my glass for me. Whether it was a discounted rate, whether it was a free pendant, whether it was a free pipe, whether blah, blah, blah. You know, there's all kinds of ways of going about it. I mean, if you want to give them a reach around as a thank you, you know, whatever you want to do. There's there's options. Um, some states, that's legal. Maybe, I don't know. But that being said, let me know what you do. If you have a percentage, let me know. Send me the information. Uh, send me your answers. Uh, send me an email. And emails are important. Hope you have an email list because emails are important. Send me an email. Info at wiseguyradio.com. Info at W-Y-Z-G-U-Y radio.com. I'll have a link in the show notes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, also, you can go to wiseguymedia.com. Go to our website. And at the very top right corner, there's a contact button. You can just click on that contact button and uh, put your information in and leave me a message also on that. And then on, <clears throat> on the website, which I still have not done for the last two episodes, I've been slacking. I shouldn't, well, yeah, a little bit. I, I haven't been slacking. I've been <laughs> working my ass off. <laughs> I haven't really been home. Um, but you can go to wiseguymedia.com. This will be forward slash 135. And at the bottom there, there'll be a comments, little post on there too. You can leave a comment. Now, I am curious. What do you do? How do you offer your things? Uh, I'd like to take maybe accumulate all these answers and make a little thing on there. Uh, also, I'm going to be uh, taking some polls and asking questions here pretty soon. So look to that. So, all right, it's time for us to segment and transition into our Wise Guy Radio trivia question of the week. And this pertains to answers. Uh, the answer actually was will come from my interview I had with D Rock recently. And the question for that is, what is the type of dog that he has, and what's his dog's name? Um, for those that are heard the the heard the show, uh, you will know that. Um, my wife is in love with the kind of dog that he has. <clears throat> Not his dog specifically, even though we have seen pictures and he is adorable. And that's a little clue for you. If you don't want to listen because you're a lazy asshole and you just want to go look at pictures, that's fine too. But what is the type of dog that Derek has and he will be bringing with him here to St. Pete this week, which I'm excited to see? And what is his pup's name? Now, I don't remember, which is probably bad on my part, if we actually said his name, I think we did, but you can find his pup's name on Derek's Instagram, which is at, at D underscore rock glass art and, or no, not underscore. It's D dot rock glass art. 
all one word with a D or a period in between D and rock. And I'll have a link on the show notes and you can go on his Instagram and he has a post with his adorable dog and his name on there. So send me your answer to info at wiseguyradio.com. Again, I will have this, uh, this episode up with the question on there as well with a little link for you to answer. Uh, we had a shit ton of actually, once I posted on this podcast, the actual question, we had a shit ton of people responding. And there will only be one winner, and the winner will be chosen from a random choice of those who got the answers right. You must answer both questions. What type of dog does Derek have, and what is his dog's name? Send me info at wiseguyradio.com, info at wiseguyradio.com, or just go to our website, wiseguymedia.com. Top right-hand corner of the button there, you'll see where it says contact. And yeah, I'm not spitting my words out. (laughs) Or coming out, I don't have a script. I'm just flying off this freaking handle here. Seat of my pants, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, there you go. And one more thing before I leave, I want to let you know that I will be putting out a survey in our newsletter that is going out next week, <clears throat> as well as if you're in the Torch Talk group, I'm going to post it in there. And then the the actual survey will the link on the will be a, a link basically. So here, let me back up. I'm going to be creating a survey which is pertaining to my new online glass course series that I'm going to be launching here next year. I have several videos already made up that I'm going to be giving away here uh, next month and this month as well. Uh, But behind the scenes, we are in the works now of uh, getting a website built and uh, going through the process of getting everything uploaded with our our basic, uh, what are we looking for here? The template, I guess we should call it. And uh, then I'm going to be recording with the videos and uh, pretty excited about it. So I'm going to be getting a survey done and I will have a link and on the Torch Talk uh, group page as well as Wise Guy Radio Facebook page. And the link will just take you to our website. But either way, um, I'm going to be giving away uh, a really nice prize uh, to a winner who answered first. It just, I mean, basically, if you fill out this survey, which I need from you to understand what it is you need as a glass artist. What are your struggles? Uh, what type of uh, questions do you have? You know, what are you looking for? What do you need? I'm here to help. And I want to make sure that you are a successful, not only as an artist, but just as an overall human being, as a business person, so that in 20 years from now, you are still behind your torch. You're physically capable of doing it. You're financially capable of doing it and also emotionally capable of doing it. These are three major aspects in running a business and being a capable human being and to love what it is you're doing on a daily basis. It's a blessing that we can sit behind our torch and melt glass and make things and be creative and have a fucking blast, pay our bills, whatever it is that you do that this allows you to support your life, your lifestyle. We talked about this in early episodes. Tim Ferriss is a big proponent of it. He's changed and made the move movement of and the, and the whole coin, the phrase of, lifestyle design. We are in a industry that is a lifestyle. Similar to like Silicon Valley, those guys out and gals out there that are in the tech world, that's a lifestyle. If you look at that type of person, they have a specific thing that they do. Our industry, we have a specific thing that we do that we're into that we love. And I'm here to help in any shape or form possible to allow you to become the best you that you can be which then in turn helps me become the best me I can be. And that being said, I got to give a huge shout out to Nick. Uh, Nick, I don't know your last name, uh, but you gave some love to my wife's friend, who is their teachers, and you were over at their house the other night with uh, her son, who you know. If you're listening to this in your ear right now, uh, and the word got back to my wife, and she was like super pumped to hear from friends of hers, son who has a friend who's a glass artist that gave me some love and was appreciative for the show and the hard work that I've been putting into it. So thank you, Nick. Um, I would actually like Nick, if you can, if you're listening to this, send me a message. Uh, cause I'd like to get to know who you are. I'm definitely curious. All my, all my Florida glass artists here. So that being said, don't forget question. What is D rocks dog type and name? You may have to do some research, listen to the show. I believe we did talk about the type of dog. Well, I shouldn't say that we did. I know we talked about what kind of dog it is. I don't remember if we brought up his name. But you can find all that information in the show notes and also in episode 134 featuring D-Rock. And I hope you enjoyed the Halloween episode. I had a lot of fun doing that. I'm going to be doing that more often. Uh, I enjoy the production side of things when it comes to creating these podcasts. Uh, besides rambling like I do all the time. And I appreciate you listening to my rambles. Uh, but I had a lot of fun 
um, it, I, I still, I've, I've gone back and listened to the intro to uh, my monologue there several times and uh, just laugh at just the fun that I had doing that. And my daughter and my son and my wife, we all had a blast listening to it and they all thought I was fucking crazy and probably because I am. So, <laughs> so hope you enjoy this episode. I know it's a lot of rambling and what have you, but just remember, uh, communicate with your shop, your shops, your retails, treat them with respect as they will treat you with respect. But just remember that you are the artist, you are the commodity, you are the creator of your work. Do not let anybody out there tell you that your work is less valuable than what you really truly feel it is. Be confident in your work. You know, get feedback from artists in your area, from friends, like honest, and take that feedback. So you can clean up your work, you can fine tune it so that you, when you do go to a shop and you ask for a certain number for it, that you're not afraid to walk out if they don't give it to you. It's hard if you're struggling financially. I understand. I've been there. I've been to shops where I had to pay my rent and I walked into a store and the guy's like, I'll give you $300 for your whole case. And the case was, I mean, even now I could, I could lowball it and it would be worth eight to a thousand dollars. And I was offered 300 bucks. I had to pay my rent. I was getting evicted at the time. I was new into this industry and I had to walk out of the store. But you know, when I walked out of the store, I met a guy out front sitting out there who would just happen to be there, who was a distributor, who became a business partner of mine in a sense and sold my glass for 13 years. It's just, you know, just the way it works. So that being said, just be confident, be strong and know sometimes you're going to have to be hungry. Sometimes your power is going to go off. It fucking sucks. But don't let that keep you down. Motiv have that motivate you to become the best at what it is you do. The best human being, the best glass artist, the best salesperson, marketer, whatever. And I'm here to help guide you along the way. So stay tuned to episode 136 where I'm going to be getting into some more details about uh, the online courses. I'm actually going to be doing an entire episode dedicated to uh, talking about what is coming up, the syllabus I'm going to be offering, and what's going to be involved with the online series uh, for Wise Guy University. And super excited about it. It's something brand new for our industry. Uh, there's a lot of webinars and online courses and classes and whatever. Uh, Dustin Revere is a trailblazer for a lot of this, and uh, which has been one person who's inspired me to do this podcast. Uh, but I'm going to be doing something very different and very new uh, as we try to... Uh, help bring this community, this industry together in a unified form, uh, standardization, uh, techniques, foundations, pricing. I mean, you name it. Think about what this industry has. We're going to be covering these courses. So stay tuned. Super pumped. All right, I'm out of here. I'm rambling. I got to take a shower and get the fuck on the road. So love you so much. Thank you for tuning in to episode 135 of the Wise Guy Radio Show. Holy shit balls! 135 episodes. <laughs> I can't fucking believe it. So I'm out of here. My dog, Maley, she says bye too. She's at my feet. So hope you have a great day. Take care of yourself. Love you. See you. This episode of the Wise Guy Radio Show is brought to you by The Flow Magazine. Since its inception, the focus of The Flow has been to provide a bond among members of the lamp working community. In every issue, you can enjoy great content with the hottest artists and cutting edge techniques using the latest industry products. These features, along with the continuation of our Women in Glass edition, Glass Craft Emergent Artist Awards, inspiring gallery showcases, dynamic general interest articles, as well as health and safety information, make The Flow the leading international lamp working journal. For more information or to subscribe to The Flow, Go to theflowmagazine.com. That's theflowmagazine.com.